Hello YouTube, it's your boy B3, back with another kicking movie reaction review. I'm going through a couple sci-fi sets that I purchased uh, for myself last Christmas. Uh, <laughs> I got these two sci-fi sets that are mostly universal sci-fi films. Uh, oops, dropped my phone. Uh, and these films uh, have a lot of cool stuff in it, including one that I know you guys will like. It is a kind of a kaiju film. I'm kind of hesitant to call just normal animal but bigger a kaiju, but I am, for the sake of views. <laughs> Tarantula from 1955. Uh, it is a sci-fi film, maybe a little horror, uh, but yeah, mostly sci-fi. There are several places you can watch it. Uh, DVD copies and film sets are relatively easy to find. You can watch it on uh, YouTube, Google Play, Movies and TV, Vudu, and Amazon Prime Video for as low as $3.99 to rent. It's got a 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb, a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 4.9 out of 5 on Shout Factory. Plus, 87% of Google users liked the film. Those are all really good ratings, right? Release date was December 14th, 1955. Uh, gotta love the... 50s, 50s sci-fi, so fun. And there was like a whole subgenre of 50s, just giant bug movies like Them, which we reviewed forever ago, and The Deadly Mantis, which we recently reviewed. Uh, very recently, actually. Quick read up. When a tarantula mutates into a giant meat-eating monster, Dr. Matt Hastings sets out to stop it. Classic giant bug movie from the director of It Came From Outer Space, which I also need a copy of and to review. It's a good film. Uh, it was directed by Jack Arnold, and it's actually based on something. It's based on No Food for Thought, which was a science fiction theater teleplay, also from uh, 1955, but more in the summer and not the the winter, uh, which was by Robert M. Fresco. Uh, and it's kind of good, because Jack Arnold, the director, and Robert M. Fresco, the writer of the teleplay, uh, actually worked together on the screenplay for this, along with Martin Berkeley. The music was composed by Herman Stein, Henry Mancini, and Joseph uh, Gershinson. It's got several names, some of them recognizable. It's starring uh, Mara Corday as Steve. Yeah, she plays uh, Stephanie Clayton, but her nickname's Steve. Uh, Leo G. Carroll, John Agar. Clint Eastwood's in it, but only at the very end. He plays a uh, pilot. So he's got the face thing on. You really don't. You only see his eyes and you hear his voice for a couple sentences, but that's it. This was, this was like the, I think this was the year Clint Eastwood started acting, actually. Because I believe his first role was the scientist in uh, Revenge of the Creature, that he had a very small part in also. And I think that was his first appearance, which was in the same year as this film, I believe. If that's wrong, please correct me. Uh, Nestor Pavia, Rose Elliott, and Hank Patterson also star in the film. But yeah, Tarantula, this is actually... Probably my second favorite giant uh, bug movie from the 50s. My first favorite would, of course, be uh, Them. I love Them. Them is fantastic. But Tarantula is probably my number two. It really is. I really like Them. Uh, I mean, Tarantula. Now I'm thinking about Them. Now I want to watch Them. But yeah, Tarantula kind of starts out with this doctor trying to figure out something about a, a diseased scientist that recently passed away. And eventually we kind of learn out, figure out that they're using this uh, synthetic nutrient in a lab in the desert to kind of make animals a lot bigger. And they want to use it on plants and stuff too, but to kind of make food sources much bigger because of the growing population, etc. So they can feed everybody, but they're using something nuclear to do it, of course, because it's 50 sci-fi, so it has to be radioactive. And for some reason, one of the things the scientist tested on is a tarantula. He tested on a bunch of, like, harmless, cute little rodents. And giant rodents can, can be deadly. Like, you know, giant rats would definitely eat people. I don't know if you've seen Food of the Gods or Night of the Lepus or something, but they'd be easier to... But they'd probably die just from starving giant rats and rabbits would because they're rodents of high metabolisms. But a tarantula, you make a tarantula giant, you're asking for trouble, man. Why would you even test on a tarantula? <laughs> on a tarantula? <laughs> oh, jeez. Especially when you know you're growing things to be gigantic. So the tarantula starts eating cattle and stuff, and eventually people, and they have to destroy it. 
I'm going to give you the ending here. The first thing they try is blowing it up. They get it to walk over a, a cache of explosives, and they set the explosives off, but it doesn't do anything. And they're like, oh man, we got to retreat to the town, and the tarantula follows them to the town, which it hadn't found yet. <laughs> yeah. So, they, they're in town. You can see the tarantula walking towards the town. They aren't doing anything about it. Then a couple jets show up, uh, led by Clint Eastwood. And they just blow the thing to smithereens. They just shoot it with some missiles and some napalm, and it's over. And I was like... Like, I remembered that's how they beat it from the first time I watched it years ago. And I also watched the Brandon Tenold film, uh, video on it a while back as well. And I, yeah, So I remembered this film pretty well, to be honest. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's just not satisfying. Uh, in these kind of movies, it's it's better if it's like... Conventional weapons just beating something isn't super great, especially if there's just one singular threat. You know? Like, you know how in lots of dinosaur movies, like, if there's a ton of dinosaurs, bullets will kind of be effective against them. But in dinosaur movies, if there's just, like, one singular dinosaur, it's often immune to bullets. Because it's a single threat and it shouldn't be beat that easily. And I'm even going to use Godzilla 1998 as an example here. In Godzilla 1998, he was vulnerable to conventional weapons, but they could never hit him with conventional weapons because he was so fast and elusive. So, they actually had the plan to trap Godzilla on the bridge because of the suspension wires so that, he could, so that they could keep him still to shoot him and kill him. So, I actually kind of liked that. I, it, and part of me is like, Godzilla should not be vulnerable to conventional weapons at all, but... You know, if it had been just some regular kaiju they made up, I would have been completely satisfied with that ending. And in Tarantula, it's just like, they just blow it up. It's that easy. Once they figure out it exists and can prove it, then it's like, all right, just kill it, and it's done. And that's not satisfying. You need to come up with some clever way to defeat it that the audience maybe wasn't able to think of. And these, all these 50s sci-fi films are starring these heroic scientists. And if you're going to have a heroic scientist as, you know, your main character, then maybe science is what should be used to defeat the creature. You know? And not, I mean, I know missiles and stuff are science, but, like, not the kind of science I'm talking about, you know? Just blowing up the monster with conventional weapons with little to no problem at the end is... <sighs> lazy. It's lazy. It's just lazy. Uh, I do like the special effects in this film. They're pretty good. And that, and for 50s acting, it's also pretty good. Uh, to be honest, it's got some good sets and locations. I like it, you know? The, the spider effects were done well. They actually used a real spider for most of the film. And it didn't appear as if there was any animal cruelty. I didn't see any moments where I was like, how dare they do that to that tarantula? I was just watching it and I was like... This seems, uh, it's just a tarantula walking around, you know? It's, 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 it's nothing cruel. They're not doing anything cruel. They're just putting it in front of the camera and letting it walk, which I was, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. So, uh, <laughs> I thought that was cool. I did. Uh. Also, I thought the acting was pretty good. The writing's fine, except the ending. Just, urgh. I hate how they beat the monster. But there was a good special effect at the end where they, like, have the corpse of the tarantula on fire, and it's like the legs are falling apart and stuff, and I thought that looked really good. But it also made me think. I was like, tarantulas are covered in hair, and that thing's burning right next to the town. That town is going to smell like nasty-ass burnt hair for years. <laughs> it's just gonna... This is gonna smell so bad. Uh, but yeah, I really liked Tarantula. I'm glad I have a copy of it in my collection. It's a very, very fun film. I just don't like the way they beat the monster in the end. I think they should have had to come up with something clever. But they didn't. They just threw a bunch of explosives at it and it worked. So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Next time we'll probably be reviewing The Mole People. 
which I believe is another Universal film. So that's it. Thank you all once again, and I'll see you all next time.